In this place, memories are torn from the flesh and spirit that housed them. That is just how this world is structured. Those who die are reborn anew to continue their battle. That is the cycle of this world. Death and rebirth. Death and rebirth. Yggdrasil At the sky castle Valhalla, standing central in Asgard, one of the nine worlds that make up Yggdrasil. The bomb bomb. Uh, uh, Fantastic Boyfriends reuse sprite. <laughs> this is supposed to be Odin, supposedly, but it's literally just from Fantastic Boyfriends. Uh, this sprite doesn't have any legs, because the original sprite didn't have any legs either. Odin sits atop his golden throne, wolves curled around his feet. Valkyries, I, Odin, god of war, king of Valhalla, order you. Bring before me the remains of the new heroes. Odin's voice booms across the hall, and Valkyries swoop down to listen. They'll bring to their masters those heroes who have fallen this day in battle. My sacred artifact, Gungnir, will collect the memories of these dead warriors, etching them into eternity. So that is the pillar. Is there- oh yeah, there might be several pillars now I think about it. I don't know. But it can hold memories, so it should be a pillar. Then again, can all sacred artifacts hold memories? Hmm, at least those are attached to a different world. The Valkyries gather the dead and the pillar, Gungnir, draws out their memories. Then... Holy warriors, Einarjar, are reborn from the remains of the dead, resurrected to fight until the end of time. After several repetitions of the ceremony, Odin lowers his spear, moving on to the next ceremonial process. Go now, my covetous wolves, and collect that which has been left behind of any sac sacred artifacts. Yes, all father. The wolves answer the leader like so. <laughs> Having their orders, the creatures gather among the dead warriors' husks. They voraciously devour the bodies. The role of these wolves is to take care of that which is left over after Odin ceremonies. That which is not eternal. Okay, so they take he takes memories from the dead bodies, and then he uses the wolves to consume the empty husks of the remains after. Hmm. Odin casts his gaze far into the distance, well beyond the walls of Valhalla. Surrounding his world spans an impossibly long, invisible wall. Huh. So other worlds are also trapped within walls. This is a subsystem of Yggdrasil. I see... wait... A subsystem? Are systems and battle zones one and the same? Just at different scales? Like the system of Tokyo just might be the system within Tokyo's walls. The system of the worlds. And like surrounding things in walls can create new systems. And they're like a system in which battles are specifically meant to take place are called battle zones. That's my understanding so far. However. Listen, my covetous wolves. There is a new revolution on the horizon, far away from this world of Yggdrasil, distanced by both space and time. Yes, there is another world, patched together of 23 different worlds and surrounded by a wall. It is on the verge of its birth. It surpasses even the experiment held here in Yggdrasil. He speaks atop a floating throne with dark blue wolf at his feet. Understood, all father. The wolf bows low, answering him. He understands not even a tenth of what his master says. Even if the warriors there fall in battle, they are resurrected. Their war must wage on for all eternity. So... Hmm. That's... Yes. It is the same for them as for the Einarjar of Yggdrasil. 
Or, perhaps, the Iron Jar was just simply an experiment before the true test. That can only mean that Loki, the one who schemed up the experiment in Yggdrasil, is involved. Huh. So, something similar happened in Yggdrasil with Loki. Some sort of test of enclosure to change the, the rules of a system or subsystem. No one inside the halls of Valhalla could soon forget the name of Loki. Those who previously stood beside Odin were Thor, Freyr, and finally, Loki. Thor being the exception that Kengo and Oniwaka summoned in Chapter 3. Freyr being uh, Golan Bursti, the year of the Wildest Boar's uh, master, and Loki now being a new interest character. He is brother to Odin, who built the walls of Yggdrasil after Valhalla was constructed. In that case, I myself must clean up after Loki, as I have always done. However, I cannot be summoned into that world as the representative of the venerated world tree, our world, Yggdrasil. The reason being that, at the center of this new experiment, already lies one with the same rule and rule I possess. I see, so if he tries to, he'll come out there as a pseudo-exception, just like a, in uh, Embark, not Embark, in, yeah, Embark, Unfurl the Skills? No, Embark, Summer Ocean Adventure, uh, Leviathan, tr tried to enter, um, Leviathan tried to enter Tokyo, but it, because uh, Tifon had too similar mythology to him, he ended up being summoned with like no memories of anything, uh, like a pseudo exception, because the system within the world of Tokyo wasn't really able to, didn't have a rule, I guess was just didn't have the capacity to uh, take two overlapping uh, mythologies. In this case, it, what's not overlapping is not mythology, but the rule and rule. Odin steers off into space, and as he does, a look of chagrin spreads across his face. Chagrin. Chagrin, I don't know. But yeah, it looks like rules and rules are the, one of the consistent things between systems. Two beings with the same rule and role are unable to exist in the same system. I see. That is why I, I have sent Huggin and Munin, Thought and Memory, to this new world to stand in for me. However... The wolves look to their new master's shoulder. The wolves look to their master's shoulders. The ravens that are always perched there, Huggin and Munnin, are nowhere to be seen. They have yet to return. Is it possible they are swallowed by another system? To be swallowed by another system, does that mean their rule and rule has been overruled or have been taken over by hierarchy by someone else's rule? With a dominating system? That is why I must command you, my loyal wolf. Go forth to this world in my stead and take care of Loki's messes. Yes, all father. The wolf stands at attention, presents not a glimpse of hesitation. It puts its master's orders above all else. A vicious conflict that will unfurl that land. Nay, an unfathomable war between systems, to be more accurate. I grant to you a portion of my rule and rule. That which defines me as God of War. You cannot put an end to that world. That is not within your power. What you may be able to accomplish is to deal with the aftermath once the continual strife is at last brought to an end. My voracious wolf, find Huggin and Munin and see to the end of this revolution. Travel to the furthest reaches of the new world and thus... What? Where am I? My thoughts and memories seem to cut out every time I hear that voice. Shit! I don't even know how I got here in the first place. I feel like I had an important vision just now. <laughs> there are troopers here too. I'm not sure if they followed me, but I'd be done for if we got into a fight now. I need to make sure I blend in to get through here. Maybe if I make myself look like a school suit. Oh my god, she's alive! Oh no. What a, what a cock. <laughs> Babylon! 
Break morphs his body, changing shape, and watches as. Oh no, she's just watching. Or she knows this one. Oh, no. no irregularities. We'll move on to guarding the portal. Over. Uncool break. They left. This power really saved my hide. Ever since the incident in Shinjuku Central Park, Rake has had no choice but to face the truth. There is a strange power dwelling inside of the robotic body that is his own. He can not only create weapons from his mechanical suit, he can also change shape at will. At a moment's notice, he can become a young woman, a massive warrior, or even a white-haired child. <laughs> he can even turn into a female version of himself if he so pleases. Alright, this is a bit too much of a callback to the Giant Side. Is, is there a meaning to why he changed to that? That data was inside him. Uh, his creation was obviously influenced, like, or at least Curran had a hand in it, and Curran is affiliated uh, with the, the the guild that wants to, you know, make make the vessel more powerful or something. So, yeah, Break is like an escapee from that guild of some kind. There are a lot of machine troopers here. Why so many? What's going on in the city? Are they trying to start a full-blown war? And what am I? There's so much going on that I don't understand. Ray casts his eyes to the night sky, letting his jaw hang open. His face looks haggard. Ugh, I'm exhausted. I don't know if I can go on. As his consciousness begins to fade out with exhaustion, a single figure comes to mind. The figure belongs to the single memory break retains. Having broken his promise, he whimpers in regret. I'm so sorry. I told you I'd wait for you, Arison. Break collapses to the ground. He can hear footsteps drawing closer. Hephaestus. Is this? After having, been, after having collapsed and been carried to the nurse's office, you embark on a new mission. You make your way to the old school building adjacent to Shinjuku Central Park. The front entrance is taped off with the words "Keep Out" printed across the strands. The building appears to be closed off to the public. Is this the old school building? I know it's closed, but. You enter the building. As you walk around, you come across a hallway that almost seems to beckon you to walk around through it. A massive collection of books comes into your field of vision. Is this a library? The air in here is so... The books are made of strange material. It's almost as though they're swallowing all surrounding light. I think I've seen this before. Or have I felt this before? Uendo Nightmare Kingdom! Inside Jambavan's dream! Your breath feels stifled. You reach out on an impulse, but just as you're about to pluck one from the shelves. You best not touch those books. Please leave them to me. Furubumi! My boy! You turn towards the caution voice. There is a single student standing in front of you, clutching a book. Hi there. Ah, so you came in here, regardless. The door was taped off. I assume you heard the rumors and watched the peak? Uh, who are you? I'm Furufumi, a third year student at Shinjuku Academy. I'm in charge of this library. I've heard of you. All is written in my book of prophecy. Harry's? What are you talking about? <sighs> I'm sure you are aware, but this is a disused school building for Shinjuku Academy. I take care of all the books here. They're old, and I think many will never ever even be read again. 
I guess I haven't read much recently. Uh, he must get lonely. That is likely for the best. I like the quiet. Also, I do not believe that something needs to be known by others simply because it's old. This world is full of things that you'd be better off forgetting or never having learned. Too real to for me. Anyone lose their sanity if they learned of the end of his days. If we were to continue down an endless path, reliving that over and over. Does he know about loops? Why do you? The events that brought the end of two previous eras. A horrible king who rules the world. He says that if you resurrect, he says that if you resurrect something, then you rule it. What do you me suppose he means by that? It's just a rambling of a romantic astrologer. That trite story used to be a very popular in this city. Now, he exits that way. All I want is to be left alone to read here in peace and quiet, so... Furufumi turns his back to you, heading deeper into the library. Wait! I heard I could meet a ghost here. The moment that you take after Furufumi... What? What? You blink, and f holy shit, <laughs> find yourself in an unfamiliar safe house. Standing before you, your very eyes are. As a sauce surter in Babylon. You shriek in surprise at the sight of the dead genociders. <laughs> they, however, act as though nothing unusual has come to pass. They continue staring gravely out of a window. Yeah, <laughs> the dad ending again. I swear, you you're such a noob, my dear child. It ends the same as always, Arthur. I'm so happy that I was able to act as your father, though. It both pains and relieves me that you won't remember any of this. Surtur embraces you as he says this, tenderly stroking your hair. You and I will surely stand against each other once more as enemies. When that time comes, such memories would simply bring you pain. I guess if you want a perfect game, you gotta get all the bad endings too. I'll stick with you until the end. As the sauce continues laughing as he takes your hand in his. Here comes the summoners according to plan. Get yourselves together. I understand. Then, let's continue on towards Ragnarok. It'll all be okay, no matter what happens to me. I'll always make sure you get away. That one. <laughs> I don't want to get away. I want to stay. You can't go. Babylon strokes your face <laughs> gently as she smiles. Her hand is warm to the touch. Even if we aren't related by blood. Even if ours was simply a one-time chance meeting. The feeling I have nurtured still remain. No matter what happens, you'll always be family to me. T take care, Arthur. What? No! What? <coughs> What's the matter? Did he see something bad? <coughs> ah! My body's shaking. I don't remember that happening. You don't know why. But tears are streaming down your eyes. You are unable to say anything back to the others as you went your separate ways. You could do nothing but receive their loving emotions. It was so vivid, this memory of sorts <laughs> has shaken to your soul. You think you hear something creaking, ready to snap far off in the distance. Furufumi calls to you. His face unmo an unmoving facade. Why do you resist? What do you hope to accomplish? Do you really seek to bring an end to the cycle? 
why? It's a comfort to have the same result continue to play out. That way, the possibilities will always be on the horizon. It's just scary to, to long for something beyond the pages of the book. Fudu Fubi? How much do you know? All that is to come is inscribed inside my book of prophecy. To rebel against the one who controls time itself is surely a vain exploit. I'll say this one more time. You shouldn't be in here, so go away. It'd be best if you tried to avoid this place. Please think about what I've told you for your own good. Farewell, Arthur. <laughs> what the fuck for it? <laughs> you are greeted by a dark sky at the door as the door is closed behind you. A dismal rain has set in. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way for me. <laughs> Oh, God. Maybe it does. I don't know. Uh. Is it really futile? The road behind you is the road ahead. <laughs> Do you look to the past? Look to the future? A past was nothing but pain. A future is nothing but uncertainty. Okay, I need to calm down. Let's continue. It's been one day since the incident in the old school building. You're in classroom 2B. Toji approaches you as you sit at your desk. I'm okay, I'm okay. Ugh. Toji, you look especially lethargic today. Did something happen after school yesterday? Our meeting at the safe house started shortly. Our meeting at the safe house starts shortly. Are you feeling well enough to come? Yeah, I'll come. I'm sorry for worrying you. Do not worry about it. I'm here to take care of you after all. Ah, Toji. Uh, the underdog of the summers. It's so easy to look you over, but when, when we're alone, you always say such comforting things. I believe Ryota has brought some treats to share. Everyone is already gathered. We are the only ones not present. Let us be going. It would be rude of us to keep our guests waiting. Our guest. Ark. Guest? Yes, I believe that Shira mentioned it a few days ago. Were you so lost in thought that you did not hear him? It seems our guest is quite excited to be reunited with you. You would never get you would never guess so based on your expression, but Ark 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 come on You and Toji head for the safe house. By the time you get there, everyone's already waiting excitedly. Sorry to have kept you waiting. I escorted Arison. <sighs> this song Fuck! It's my jam! Shit! Let this be the new summoner's theme. Shit, this is amazing. The room erupts into excitement as Toji's announcement. Everyone begins talking at once. So you came. We've been waiting for you, Arthur. I'm glad you're here. Look who finally just showed up. We couldn't start without the Guildmaster. I'm just gonna say, I wasn't worried a bit. Kengo places his hand on your shoulder and gives you a noogie with the other. <laughs> Sometimes got someone's gotta lighten the mood a bit, right? If you don't smile, you end up looking all serious like glasses over there. Hey, I brought treats. I had to wait two whole hours in line to get them. Let's eat some together later. They're really good, so I'm sure they'll help you feel better. Shiro, Kengo, Ryota. I have been waiting for you. You finally became an official member of the Summoners. I am so excited to be a full member now. If 
feels like I, ha I haven't seen you in forever. Me? I'm on top of the world as usual. Moritaka, Hanuman, Eden, Tadatomo. Sandwich between Moritaka and Hanuma is the red class ninja who stood before you in a vicious sight for survival. So the Hakenshi, two of them are here. There will be three, but awkward. <laughs> oh no, she, she, you know. He takes a step forward, takes a knee, and bows his head low before you. I'm glad to see you again, my lord. It is I, Tadatomo. The summoners have paid my fees, so I have been officially hired. Ha! Huh. Cool. By my own request, I will remain unaffiliated with this guild for the time being, but I pledge to support you as best as I can. I am still a novice, but I hope that I can be of help in some way. Tadatomo! Glad to have you on our team. I will not disappoint you. Hey! We got another ninja! We'll probably be able to make the Summoner's Ninja Clan at some point. I have brought one more guest with me today. He is just over there. Boritaka introduces a corner to, of the safe house in which a lone boy sits, leaning against the wall. Who is it? 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 What? Okay, I'm good. Oh my god, he's fucking shit! No, it's Chilichi! Chilichi! <laughs> oh no, it's Chilichi! He's so broken! Chilichi! Shit! Oh god, what has the world done to you? Fucking duo! Oh god! Ugh. Hello. Shuichi. He shows no sign of having heard you. His eyes are completely blank as he simply sits listlessly, popped up, propped up by the wall. Together with several allies, I sought Shuichi out when he went missing after the battle. By the time we found him, he was already like this. He is scarred both physically and mentally. I just couldn't leave him behind. That's why I talked to Shiro and ended up bringing him here. I hope that was okay, Arjun. Of course it's okay. <laughs> I didn't know you two knew each other. We used to train at the same dojo. We are brothers in arms, so to speak. Our portal is secured now, so you can safely leave his protection to Moritaka and me. You have my deepest gratitude, Shiro. God damn it, Shuichi. <laughs> Shuichi. <laughs> Remember when you were enemies and you doubted him and you disliked him and you kept on doubting him and you didn't want to join his guild and you kept on trying to outsmart him and then like he cooperated in chapter 7 and now he's just like <laughs> and now he's completely broken and now he just <laughs> oh no you turn your attention to the final guest Ark you Sitting before you is none other than the guild master of the genociders, Ark. Ark. It's nice to see you again. You really helped me out back there. I'm grateful. I'll be sitting in on your meeting today. God, I need Mary to voice her. Him. They, every single time, they screw up, but you know, uh, the, an the analyst, gotta love this song. Now, shall we, we commence the guild meeting, Arthur? Let's do this thing. Take it away, Shiro. First of all, I'm sure you're all familiar with each other, seeing as you fought side by side. However, I would like to take this chance to formally introduce our new friend. Thank you. This is the guild master of the genociders. Please call me Ark, as Shiro said. I am simply here today as the genociders guild master. I am here in memory of my mother, father, and brother. I hope that you can forgive us. Oh, that's so Oh, 
Oh no. How will this play out? What are you talking? Uh. Uh. What are you talking? Tadato will exchange glances, then nod toward you. Okay, they're here. They're here for me. <sighs> Straight face. What do you say, Arthur? Gladly. Thank you. It looks like Ark has the Guildmaster's permission. What do the rest of you say? Shiro looks at those around him. Nobody makes any remarks, so he takes it as a sign of approval. It appears you're in the clear, Ark. Thank you all. I will be sure to not bring shame upon my guild. <laughs> you're a guild of one? Is that even a guild? I'm pretty sure you need four people. I'm sorry. That's too soon. <laughs> you know. Oh, Babylon, sir, sir. As a stock. Fucking, oh, God. Now, let's go get down to business. First, to confirm the current state of affairs. Oi, do we seriously have time to be talking about that sort of crap? We would be, do we would do it. What would you do if we got attacked right now? <sighs> With all due respect, I don't believe you have anything to fear. Isn't that right, Toji? Correct. I have been on guard for some, quite some time, so I'll let you know my thoughts. I believe that there are absolutely no indications that our guild will come under attack. I have seen many new app users in the area. However, I believe that none of them will attempt to directly assault our portal. Not even those troopers Arith met at Chinchiku Central Park have shown any signs of aggression towards us since that day. It seems that your little incident with them was simply part of a much larger situation. Seriously? They came swinging out like that only to run away? This is all speculation, but it seems that they do not view us as an enemy. That's right, they said in the chapter 8, they just wanted to make Arthur make me. <laughs> uh, I don't know, they wanted them to be... Uh, the bearer of, like, the sacrifice bearer or something. I'm not sure, but they basically wanted to prop Ar myself up to them. Oi, what the hell are you talking about? Aren't you forgetting that the angel said when they attacked us? Go. Unlike you, I have the power to pull it off, for I am Michael, the valiant archangel, Eden's best. You should understand after I kill off all your friends and break your heart asunder. You have no choice but to devote yourself to the role. I will sacrifice everything to make you omnipotent. That's So they are trying to prop me up. I will raise your rank to the very top, killing everyone else along the way. As Jesus Christ. I don't understand what's happening. So they want me the winner. Other people want the battle to go on. And other people want to abduct me or something. I'm not sure. What about my choice? This is real what it comes down to. What, what? How am I gonna decide on a matter to control my own future? Your will is irrelevant because a rank cannot be, can be enforced. Isn't it convenient? The game was designed this way. Oi. I love saying oi, friend. Can't go. I didn't understand anything he said, but he attacked us out of nowhere. If that trick's not our enemy, then who the hell is he? Then who the hell is? <sighs> Perhaps... Yeah. I believe you and I are thinking the same line of thought. I believe you and I are thinking the same thing, Arthur. Kengo, think. If we were not their immediate goal, then what would be? Well, uh... Wait, what are you saying they might have been after the others there with us? What are you saying they might have been after the others there with us? The Genociders? Hmm. It is a possibility that they were never, never chasing after us, but we're targeting Searcher and the others. That is highly plausible. I want everyone to remember, he said... He 
Jeffrey has been connected to those of so many others during this oblivious loop of happy school life. In another loop, he spent a wonderful time as Searcher, Babylon, and Azathos, against whom you just pit yourself in a tooth and nail fight for survival. This is referring to Valentine's Festival, a Valentine's Extravaganza. I haven't seen either of those Valentine's translations, or even though it leaks in Valentine Jail. I really want to be caught up with the story because, like, you know, I don't want to be spoiled for this later just by, like, existing in the Discord server. Those words were simply meant to provoke. However, they weren't aimed at us. Yes, that must have been aimed at the genociders. That would mean. What were the words again? They were aiming for a searcher in Azathoth, and they succeeded. It is dangerous to limit our thinking too much. I will say, however, that your theory does seem to hold validity. And for no other reason that they have not attacked us since. They have not even shown us some since. They could have followed us. They've had n numerous opportunities. <laughs> Yet, they do not. They are allowing our continued existence. They do not deem us as a threat. It seems best to view it as such. Uh, because they know so much more? It says Toji says, we shouldn't limit our thinking. It is entirely plausible that they are not attacking us for a different reason entirely. In any case, the only thing we can say for sure is that there's still much we need to learn. Wait, wait! What are you, why are you talking like this? I mean, Shino, Searcher, and all the others would have returned to normal just like everything else, right? Shouldn't we just go ask them instead of guessing about all this? Shino is... Yota. They came back to life, right? Just like any other for the regular app battle, everything returned to normal, right? <sighs> While acting cautiously to prioritize safety, Hanuman and Tatami have performed reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. As far as they can tell, everyone who's killed or injured during the incident spanning Shinjuku and the five other wards. All of them, and anything else that was damaged, or returned to normal after the battle zone, was dissolved. Save for those three genocidors, their status remains unconfirmed, and we have had no news of them. Well, yeah, uh, the reset happened before they got fucking yeeted by fucking Michael and the rest. No way. That shouldn't be possible. Sh should it? Please calm down, Ryota. Allow me to explain. Urk. Regarding my father and the others, it's difficult to know for sure. You aren't sure? My family and I were connected through a pact. It was... I was their summoner. Really? Wait, Ark. You were their summoner? It wasn't me who initially called them to this Tokyo. But the ones who did are no longer here. It was their parents? Maybe the, uh, her, their classmates? Someone native to the world in which this Tokyo exists had to become their summoner. So I did so. You need to be a native. You have to be from this world. However, that connection now... How should I put this? Well, it feels impossibly strained. It seems to me as though they aren't dead, but they aren't alive either. Alright, sure, then goes Cat. I believe that they fulfilled their roles in Tokyo. This Tokyo? What do you mean? Father once told me. If both parties do not wish for it, you cannot form a summoning pact. If one wishes to accomplish something in a different world, then the other must wish for them to carry out that wish in turn. <laughs> Just halfway through, use this wish. I see. 
For example, I sought to escape from ever repeating. <laughs> and ever repeating means ending. Once one has accomplished the role attributed to them in that world, transients such as ourselves would then leave only our memories behind in that world, and our physical forms would vanish. Are you talking about the same role? It seems like they're using role and pack interchangeably. In fact, they would be forced to vanish, as the pact is then finished. Yet, even if the pact is no longer necessary to the vanished transient, if the one left behind still requires him, even if the one who has gone is reduced to a system without a will of its own, so long as they have, so long, so long as they long to aid their summoner. What the heck? Searcher takes Ark's hands, placing it on his menacing helmet. We will surely leave something behind for you. We will likely leave you an instrument designed to fulfill another's desires. Hmm, packs. The moment Ark finishes their explanation, a bright flash bathes the safe house in light. Huh? Arc summoning emblem. It's glowing. This is... The next thing you know, three sacred artifacts materialize. No, they are summoned before Arc. What the hell? Oi! Is that Black Helmet? Don't tell me that Chalice is what I think it is. Is that the throne? Searcher's black helmet. Babylon's got little chalice. As a thought throne. <sighs> Did you? Summon those? How can their sacred artifacts be here if they aren't? <coughs> Ark casts their eyes towards Grand, clinging onto the three sacred artifacts. I need someone to draw Ark. Wearing that helmet, sitting on the throne, and holding the chalice. Oh, why are your chests glowing? No, fill the yellow one. It's your orb. Our orbs are shining too. What's going on? Is that Chino's? That's right. I remember seeing this when I was in Azasat's court. Chino. No. My father. Yatsufusa was reduced to eight orbs. My memories at that moment. My own father had more to say. Sacred artifacts are vessels designed to receive the most important thing a transient can possess. Their memories. A sacred artifact is a receptacle in which a transient leaves something of themselves behind in this world. So their memories are... So you mean to say that this orb is my father's? Yatsufasa's memories are held within it? Wait, fill the yellow one. There are eight orbs, of which we only hold two. Uh, you said there are memories in here? Nothing more? No bodies or souls? Well, if they have no life within them, or no physical form remaining when they leave their memories behind, I don't see how they could extract or pass on those memories. I don't know enough. I only wish I knew more about sacred artifacts. I couldn't tell you where my father and the others went, leaving behind only their sacred artifacts. Is there someone else who goes around and takes care of any aftermath, or... No. I'm just basing theories upon theories. However, if the memories of those who have completed their roles remain here... Maybe it is possible for me to meet my father again. I can't stop imagining those sorts of wild delusions. No. I should quit daydreaming already. First things first. We should do what Shiro. You can meet him again. If his memories aren't here, we'll find a way. Arathon. Yeah! It has to be possible! There has to be a way for us to meet Shiro, Surtu, and the others again. Ugh. <sighs>
I can't be I can't believe that you're going into this with no plan. <laughs> I guess that's my partner for you, though. Talking to you all gives me hope. I... I won't give up either. However, sacred artifacts, app battles, and such are still a complete mystery to us. Come on, Shiro! Why you gotta go and snow down our parade? No, Shiro is correct. That's precisely why we need to do something. The genocide has been crushed, but I am still here. I, Arak, Guildmaster of the Genociders, formally request that we join forces and form an alliance. <laughs> Pug Champ! Request granted. I just hope I can live up to your expectations. We must strike when the iron start. We should start by gathering information. Thankfully, the Berserkers, Missionaries, and Tycoons have all pledged to cooperate with us. Fuck yeah, team bitches! We're gonna fuck down Michael down in the nearest river. We're gonna all fucking dance on his grave. Berserkers and Rochiaris and Leak Skill to Tycoons. Oh yeah! Sorry, I'm just excited that uh, the chapters that everyone should sign. Fuck y'all. I love them. We're all gonna get together. We're all gonna fucking rule this world. We're gonna save. Fuck everyone's plans with me. I'm gonna do what I want. <laughs> we need to learn more about the sacred artifacts. We must share that information with the other guilds. The more information we have, the better. In that case, we should also attempt to negotiate with the Kabukuchi outlaws. Shiro claps a hand on Kengo's back, breaking into a broad grin. Kengo, I'm counting on you. Huh? You've got to be kidding me. You want me to go talk with that Tetsuya jerk? Ikabukuro, Daikaniyama, and Rafongi, and the delinquents in Kabuchikicho. I have one more idea. I recommend visiting the guild situated in Kamata, in Oto World as well. The Crafters! So this is where the chapter goes in. And also, we, we technically also have the, the wise men in our toe because of Shuichi. Although, maybe not, I guess, because du Duo is the guildmaster. But still, this is like quite an alliance we have, an inter-guild alliance. Kamata? Why would we go there? The guild, most knowledgeable about sacred artifacts, resides there. Isn't that so, Shuichi? I presume you've been following the discussion. <sighs> Shuichi. May I request of this? May I request this of you, Shuichi? During training, you once told me that you were honing your swordsmanship to protect your brother. I beg you, as brother in arms. It is so, Shio. You're expert in sacred artifact research residing in Kamata. I forgot how his voice sounds like. Actually, I don't. I've never used him in battle, so I wouldn't know what his voice sounds like. In the past, we were conducting collaborative research projects together. They are known as the Kamata Crafters. I have an acquaintance in their midst. You have my gratitude, Shuichi. The Kamata Guild. The Crafters, eh? More on that later, Shuichi. Shh. Thank you very much, Shuichi. God damn it. Everyone's so broken! But we gotta move on. Shuichi. All right, everyone, if you have your orders, let's go over the details one more time. We need to gather information on sacred artifacts. We'll contact the Ikebukuro, Ayama, and Rapongi guilds. We will also negotiate with our neighborhood with our neighboring outlaws and make first contact with the crafters. We'll split into five groups. For safe reasons, you must stay into groups of two. That's right, otherwise someone like Four Eyes might just wander off somewhere. Ahem. Now, the squad- <laughs> Wait, I just realized, that's a chap- That's a chapter 7 reference, fucking shit. <laughs> Ahem. Now, the squads are. May I request to be on a squad that goes to the Kamas Guild, if you intend to show them the sacred artifacts. That makes sense. She- They have all three, as well as her own- Their own. Seeing as they belong to my family, I would like to be present. Is that alright? What do you say, Guildmaster? No. 
No, <laughs> You'll need some of them anyway. That's also true. It would be tough to carry my baby brother's drone with us. So be it, Ark. You'll have to come out together with our guildmaster. I will think of squads to pair the rest of you off into. Remember to gather as much information as possible. Can I go to the Rapongi's guild? I want to see Link! Can I see Link! Once we know what to do, this will be easy. Wait, I, I'm just kind of surprised they didn't talk about gathering information from uh, the Beast Tamers. Maybe they already gathered enough about Luce, but still, it's odd that, you know, we just really made first contact with them in Chapter 8. At least, Shiro did. It's a bit odd that they decided to form all these alliances, but uh, failed to include them. Once we know what to do, this will be easy. Now that we have a plan... Hey, everyone, get over here! What are you doing, Miata? Oh, no, that's just Shiro. What are you doing, Ryota? Oh, I get it. Nice idea. Come on, Tatatomo. You too, Ark. Even if you aren't a member of the Summoners, you're part of the all our alliance. What should we call this alliance? Addison Squad. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, the part one, boys. I, I'm not sure what you're doing, Ryota. If it makes you happy, though, I suppose I can oblige you. Is this okay? Ark hesitantly reaches out their hands into a circle that everyone has formed. Turn those frowns upside down! Everyone together now! All for one! And summoners forever! <laughs> we got this! Huzzah! <laughs> We've all been feeling down lately, but now we're gonna get out there and paint the town red. If all we can do is advance, then we'd best do it with smiles on our faces. Ha! This is starting to get fun! I'll try my best to get on the head of the Summoner's Ninja Clan. Bully! Alright, not Nar All right, Naruto. <laughs> I just thought we should do this since everyone seems a bit blue, you know? <laughs> You're quite the man menagerie. It feels almost nostalgic. I suppose Enyer becomes someone once you have lived there long enough. I may be able to grow used to this. Alright, now that we're all together on this, let's move! Summoners, roll out! Yeah! Shuichi. Wait, we, he didn't even say who's going where. I wonder if this... I uh, hope my sound bounce is good. What? Ota Ward? Why are you... Uh, okay, so I guess the protagonist is going... Arathon is going with... Uh... Ark. We call them the crafters. 